you for your presence this morning, God. Thank you for meeting us here, God. We ask that you would come, that you would speak to our hearts. Open up our hearts for your word, Lord. And we ask that it would fall on good ground this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My name is Anita Burns. I'm a member of the Thrive family here. I've been attending church uh, for a little over three years, and I have the privilege of serving as a regional director with Samaritan's Purse Operation Christmas Child. I work with volunteers all throughout Florida and Puerto Rico, partnering with local churches worldwide to share the hope of Jesus with children in need through simple shoebox gifts filled with toys school supplies, and hygiene items. And Pastor Greg has asked me to bring a special guest with me today um, who received one of those shoebox gifts when she was a child um, living in Honduras in an orphanage. So you can imagine growing up in an orphanage in Honduras was not easy. Uh, she was literally an underdog filled with lots of hardships and the odds stacked against her. But she is going to share with you her story of how a shoebox gift packed by a stranger across the world changed her life. So would you please welcome my friend, Judy Lopez. Thank you. Buenos dias. Todos hablan español, verdad? Okay. Everybody speaks Spanish here, right? So it's okay if I can say it in Spanish? Everybody's smiling. They didn't say yes or no, so I guess I'm going to speak in English. I'm just kidding. Uh, first of all, I just wanted to say thank you, Pastor, for the opportunity to come to your church and share not my testimony, but the testimony that God has entrusted me with. So I am grateful for like just being here and... Like, you know, it's just incredible to share, you know, like something that God has done in your life through something really simple. So, like Anita said, my name is Judy, and I'm originally from Honduras. And from the day that I was born till 16 years old, I grew up in 14 different orphanages. At two years old, that's when I got separated from my siblings, including my twin sister. I still have not seen them, but I do believe that God is going to bring us together one day. After that, I ended up going to another orphanage. The orphanage started with five kids, and then it grew up to 550 children. At the beginning, we didn't have electricity, there was no water, and if we had three meals, it would be more like a tortilla and salt. But one thing that I was so grateful to have was an education, because in so many of the orphanages in Honduras, the children did not have the opportunity to go to school. I remember experiencing hope for the very first time when I received one of these colorful shoe boxes from Operation Christmas Child at the age of six years old. And everything inside of my box was so special. One, because it was my first Christmas present. But two, for the first time, I had something that I can say is my own and I don't have to open it. I mean, and I, have to, I don't have to share it with anybody else. Because normally in the orphanage, if there was a pair of shoes, the first one that come in line, that would be the one that would receive it. And I remember when I opened my gift, one of the first items I saw, if I can open my box, was a set of 10 pencils. And I screamed as loud as I could when I saw this because in my orphanage, at the beginning of the school year, they would give us one notebook and one pencil. And it has to last us the entire year. But knowing that that year, I didn't only receive one pencil, but a set of 10 pencils for me, that was special. Also, in my shoebox gift, there was a toothbrush. And I remember seeing a pink toothbrush. And same thing, I got so excited because before receiving my own shoebox gift, I have to share the same toothbrush with 25 other girls in the orphanage. And knowing that for the first time I had my own, for me, same thing, I was so grateful. But there was more items inside of my box, but something that caught my attention a lot was this note the original one. The note of the little girl who packed my gift, a note that simply said, Jesus love you, and I love you too. At that time, 
being honest with you guys, I was only six years old. I was more excited about all the items that were inside of my box. And I said it to you guys already why, but I even remember sleeping with that box for weeks and even for months like a teddy bear because I didn't want anybody in the orphanage to touch it. But at the age of 13 years old, that's when the shoe box made an impact in my life. In the orphanage, I can no longer continue my education because the orphanage didn't have financial support for my class to continue going to school. So due to that, I have to cook for a, like, how do you say, I have to cook in the kitchen for 120 boys, but also too, I have to take care of the babies when I was not cooking. And I remember at that age, 13 years old, I had a box similar to my shoebox gift, but in that box I had pictures and letters from volunteers and missionaries that have come through the orphanage through all those years that I was there. And they give us those letters to encourage us. I just remember taking that box with me to the mountains and the orphanage, and I was just angry, angry at God for the life that I was living. I was angry at him because he has separated me from my siblings, including my twin sister. I was angry at him because in the orphanage, if you were a girl, you were not allowed to play soccer. But also, I was angry at him because I felt hopeless. And I remember that after hours of just blaming him, I even questioned him. And one of the questions I asked him was, if you are real, show it to me. Show it to me because I don't see you here. I remember opening the box that I had with me, and the first thing, once again, I saw was this. The note of the little girl who packed my gift. The note that simply said, Jesus love you, and I love you too. In the midst of pain, in the midst of struggling, when I felt that God was really far away from me simply because I was an orphan, he was always there for me. He reminded me that he loved me and that somebody that didn't know me loved me as well. These simply words right here were the answers of all my prayers. That day, I embraced God's, God's love. I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But that same day, I also received another gift, and it was a Bible. When I opened it, the first Bible verse I saw was Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but plans to give you a hope and a future. And that day, I did believe that God had a plan for my life. Today, I just want to encourage you guys, if you have not packed shoe boxes, to pack shoe boxes because it does make a difference, like it did in my life when I was only six years old. And I just wanted to, just to finish, just wanted to say thank you once again for the opportunity to come and share not my testimony, but the testimony that God has entrusted me with. Thank you. May God bless you all. Before Judy steps down, wow, thank you so much for sharing your story with us, just a piece of it. And you mentioned a hope that one day you would be reunited. Woo, that got me, as you can tell. <clears throat> so I want us to pray for her. Would you join me in praying for, for Judy? Let's thank God for this sister in Christ and for the way he has worked in her life and the way he's using her to make such a difference, the way a shoebox had such an, a profound impact on her life, and we can all share in that experience in helping make a difference for a child somewhere in the world this coming fall. But um, I want to pray with you, Judy, and just join my heart with yours in faith that she will once again be re reunited with your siblings. Can we pray? Father God in heaven, we are humbled and we are blessed by our sister Judy being with us to share today. What a beautiful testimony that you have given her to share with us. Not easy. It comes out of her loneliness and pain as a child. But you broke through, God. She slept with that shoebox like a teddy bear because of how much it meant to her. And then those words broke through as a young teenager that you loved her, and so do we. God, thank you for introducing her to your love in such a profound way. And today, Lord, I didn't see this coming. This is not uh, anything but a couple humble believers who simply want to take you at your word, God. You said where two or three gather together and ask anything in your name, it would be done for them. And you are sovereign God. We cannot back you into a corner, 
but we can take you at your word. And so, Lord, in a very real, humble way today, I want to join my heart with my sister Judy's heart, who's expressed a desire just out of the, the authenticity of her life and out of her faith in you to one day be reunited with her sister, with her siblings. So, God, we would just humbly ask you. In fact, I believe there are many in this room right now, some online too, that are joining their hearts with us in this humble prayer, this humble request, O oh God, that you would hear our sister's prayer and her hope to be reunited with her siblings. Thank you, God, for her story. Thank you for blessing us today with her presence and her testimony. Would you bless her? And through her ministry, I pray you would multiply the story that Judy has of your love through her through by, by the hundreds of thousands this year across the world as young people receive a Christmas box, a shoebox filled with important little needs and with and packed with love and prayer so that it will make a difference in their lives. It's in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much.